Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the absolute most important thing that you can learn as an aspiring dog walker and that is how to walk multiple dogs at the same time. I have learned all of this stuff through trial and error, through years of walking dogs. I've walked anywhere from one to six dogs at the same time and I've clearly survived to tell the tale. So I want to share some of the knowledge that I have with you so that you can start off your dog walking experiences as smooth as possible. First things first, we want to talk about leashes. So I suggest actually bringing some of your own leashes along on walks. And the reason is that there will be a lot of times that you go to clients' houses and the leashes won't really be appropriate for walking multiple dogs. They may be great for one dog, but you're walking six. So what kind of leashes do you need? You need a leash that is six feet or shorter ideally shorter. The more leash that there is, the easier it is to get tangled. And tangled leashes is the death of all dog walkers. So you wanna make sure that those leashes are not tangling. And so how you do that is you start off with the proper leashes. So bring some with you. Never, ever, ever use a retractable leash. These leashes are great if you're just walking one dog at a time, but when you're walking multiple, it is absolutely, absolutely terrible. The reason why these are so bad is that you kind of have to use your hand when you're holding it and you do want to keep your hands free when you have a whole bunch of dogs just in case anything happens. Also with the retractable leashes, it's so thin and it tangles so easily with all the other leashes and it's really hard to get untangled. So they're just, they're just terrible. Just avoid them in general. When you're walking multiple dogs, you're gonna wanna use a waist leash. So that is just a leash that ties around your waist and you can hook all of the dog's leashes into that. That way, the dogs are fully attached to you so if they do see a squirrel and they wanna bolt, they can't get away from you because they're gonna take you down with them. Try not to wrap the leashes around your wrist. I have seen people break their hands through doing this when all of the dogs decide to pull at the same time. So what I suggest, if you do need an extra little bit of hold, you can tie a knot into the leash and that way you can grab onto that if you do need to pull a dog closer to you for whatever reason. Um, but definitely don't put it around your wrist because that's just bad news bears. One thing to note is that the leashes will tangle despite your best efforts. So I suggest every once in a while stopping to untangle them that way they don't just get all crisscrossy all the time if you are doing this though make sure that you're doing it in an area that doesn't have a lot of distractions because as you're untangling the dogs could possibly get away so you want to make sure that it's in a really like chill zone and that they're not all hyper when you are doing this. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the actual walk. So the dogs are gonna just naturally fall into a sort of hierarchy. So there's gonna be one or two dogs that are gonna wanna pull ahead and be the leader. And then for the most part, everybody else just sort of falls in line and just walks really nicely beside you. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your hands on the leashes of those dogs that are pulling ahead. And for the most part, those other dogs that are following behind, you may not have to touch that leash at all because they're attached to you during the whole time. So having the same dogs every day, you're going to get a better sense of who is gonna be those dogs that pull to the front so you can kind of anticipate that. It all works out how it's supposed to, so just go with the natural flow of the hierarchy of your pack. You need to be hyper aware of what's going on around you at all times. That means that you need to see the squirrel across the street before the dogs see it, or you need to see the skateboarder that's gonna be coming at you. That way you can kind of hunker down and prepare for that before the dogs get all excited and crazy and start lunging at different things. So make sure that you are hyper aware of everything that's going in your general zone throughout the course of the walk. If there are dogs coming towards you on the street, cross the street. Just don't even get into that. Even if your dogs are amazing with other dogs, they're gonna get super excited from being around that dog and then the leashes are gonna tangle and it's gonna take you a long time to calm them down. So if you do see a dog, just cross the street. It's much easier that way. And try not to let other people pet your dogs for the same reason. Know the difference between sniffing to pee and sniffing just for the sake of sniffing. You don't wanna be stopping every five seconds for your dog. You wanna make, make sure that they get enough exercise throughout the course of the walk. So you do want to let them get a good whiff of whatever it is that they're smelling, but then you wanna encourage them to keep on moving forward. If you stop for long periods of time, there's more of a chance for the leashes to tangle and then you're in trouble. It is very, very important that you never let the dogs cross behind you. If they do that, then the leash is gonna tuck behind your legs, and then if they see a squirrel or something like that, you're gonna wipe out hard because they're gonna pull you. So you want all the leashes to be in front of you. If a dog does try to cross behind you, you can just gently encourage it to go in front of you so that there's no leashes behind your legs. In general, residential streets are much better than busy city streets to walk on, and that's because there's less distractions for the dogs, so they can just be more focused 
focused on the actual walk, and also it's just better vibes in general. Generally, the more dogs that you walk, the better that you're gonna get at this, but hopefully this is a really good starting point for you when you're just beginning dog walking. I definitely suggest starting with less dogs first and then working your way up to six dogs because six is a lot. It can be really overwhelming. So definitely work your way into it and do have faith that you are gonna get better. It is something that you learn and that takes a little bit of practice. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something today and that this was valuable for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the dogs some love in the comment section below. And then also make sure that you follow our other social media accounts and we will see you in the next video.